So Elise Donim was really Maya's mother, huh? She was Misty Fay, the master of the Karain channeling technique. <laughs> oh my goodness, the inner temple! This kind of tremor might... The inner t t temple? The sacred cavern in the training hall! It might very well cave in! All of my love interests are in there! And my daughter! <laughs> what?! <All right. laughs> February 9th, Inner Temple Training Hall. Fortunately, the Sacred Cavern didn't cave in. But... What we found... was something none of us would have ever expected. What do you mean, Dick Chains? What the fuck?! Hello? And welcome back to 4 Pixels. Coco and Moon are here with guest Binks, and we are continuing Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Cricket, cricket. Oh, hello. <laughs> well, me pretending to be Binks and failing. <laughs> Awkward silence as Binks is trying to come up with a joke. <laughs> there's no joke because there's no address on screen. February 9th, Inner Temple, Trading Hall. Right. Is this what Godot was talking about? <sighs> yeah. The trick locks. Now then, Iris, please remove these at once. Sorry, I gotta adjust the volume a little. There we go. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm afraid I can't. It, it's not possible for me. What? In the earthquake, when the cavern was in danger of caving in, Iris escaped. And I know that there was only one lock when I last came here. So you're saying that you can't undo the new locks? Yes. If only I was stronger, I'd rip it off. <laughs> what? Stronger? <laughs> Stronger to do what? Is it? Is it the psycho locks? <laughs> psycho locks. I'm... Edgeworth, how are you feeling? You look a little pale in the face. I'm just imagining Edgeworth wanting to become like a bodybuilder now. <laughs> oh God! Oh my God! <laughs> Just a fucking swole, Edward. That's fucking terrifying. He'd have yeah. to get a whole new wardrobe. Mm-hmm. I'm into Bara, so I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, but I'm thinking about it, and he'd like, do, like, he'd go fucking so hard about that, though. Like, <laughs> his one bicep would be thick than Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Phoenix would be his twink, yes! <laughs> Thanks, you can't- you can't just shoot me dead with a gun. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud, Bings. Your first murder. At least that I know of. That you have, uh, yeah. <laughs> like you're one to talk with your face all green. Look, I'm cosplaying Shrek. You don't gotta call me out about it. <laughs> Miles Esbeth. 
go and get some air. I'll watch over the suspect. You go and get a grip on yourself. Okay. I I have to ask... <laughs> Sorry. I have to ask Coco, since I don't know if Bing has siblings, but I don't have siblings. Coco, would it be weird if your sibling continually uh, addressed you with your first and last name? <laughs> yes, it would like... be. It absolutely would be. And and Francisco gets called out on that several times in the series. <laughs> Why does she fucking do that? It's so fucking... Why does she like this? <laughs> Your father is Manfred. Manfred. Yeah, that's but, all the answer you Manfred need. Manfred Karma. She's been around other people. <laughs> it's not like he, like, raised her in a fucking test tube. <laughs> uh, we don't know. Hmm. Actually, I would put it past just him. A clone? That would be very terrifying. <laughs> that would be. I think this is the only time I ever see uh, Edgeworth actually get whipped. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> There's no telling what sort of mistakes you could make in your current state. Go and get some rest. That's your only concern now, Miles Edgeworth. Understood. Do you just both call your, each other your fucking full names? Talking to each other normally? <laughs> you fucking weirdos. <laughs> If they don't do that, they might have to admit they care about each other. Right. Gross feelings. <laughs> I'll handle the investigation in the garden. You take care of things here. He's doing his angsty pose. <laughs> no, he's he's so sun sun. Holy shit. Edgeworth. Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking, this is a talk like a, an internal monologue of longing. Jesus, <laughs> right? How many? I wish somebody would count how many times Phoenix thinks Edgeworth. Edgeworth. <laughs> His whole fucking career is based on I want to help and hook up with Edgeworth again. It's like Feeny, Feeny. I don't know if you know, but there's easier ways to find a person again, <laughs> such as calling, writing, showing up at their door unannounced. Um, breaking and entering, you know, any of those things are easier than becoming a fucking lawyer. <laughs> I didn't even realize that Phoenix was talking. I was just so caught up in the fact that Francisco was on screen. <laughs> <laughs> just staring at you. I forgot sure. that she was acting as the de facto female uh, uh, hanger on. I can't, I can't really come up with... Oh, sidekick. <laughs> there we go. The word. The word. He's got so much pride that he's probably off crying in the corner of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Oh, Feeny. Be, be nice. <laughs> pride is simply another trap that hinders us in our lives. <clears throat> Pot kettle? Jeez. That said, one must have pride to be effective on the job. At any rate, it seems that this is where we part ways, Phoenix Wright. I'm going to stay here and see if I can't help solve these bothersome puzzles. I see. Well, thanks for your help, I guess. And then they were alone. <clears throat> now then, do you mind if I ask you a few things, Iris? No, not at all. I'm emotional. Coco's, Coco's voice for Iris kills me every time. <laughs> Why did you make a run for it, Iris? I... I'm sorry. I heard the inner temple had been severely shaken by the strong earthquake we had. I... I was so worried. I just had to come and see. Aww. In other words, you didn't run away to escape the law. At least we're clear on that. Franny, I thought you were fucking leaving. No, she said she's gonna help with the locks. Oh, I thought she said she was leaving, and I was like, what? I'm confused. She said that uh, this is where we take our leave since eventually Phoenix is going to leave. Oh, right, right. I understand now. 
I can't tell you how relieved I was when I saw the secret cavern was alright. But... But what? And then I saw these chains here. I saw all these extra locks that someone had put on the sacred cavern's door and... Hmm... Who in the world would have done something like this? What are they doing? Can you close the door, please? Thank you. Sorry. Oh, that's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, wow, Coco's, uh, like, voice when speaking Spanish is a lot quieter than when speaking English. Like, someone's pointed that out. They say I go to a higher pitch when I speak in Spanish, and I don't, I guess, I don't know. Ju more. Just a little, but it might be because you're talking to your parents, and, like, it might be just yeah. the code switching. Yeah, like, I think that's it. And how you're it. talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> These trick locks are our sacred treasure of the Crane tradition. There are hundreds of ways to set them. That's why only the person who set the lock can open it. And you aren't the one who set these locks. I don't think it's that simple, Francisca von Karma. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Feeny, don't. When we were here the first time, there was only one lock. But now, somehow, there's five of them. Coincidence that that's the most amount of locks you can get on a psych lock? Oh, is that how that works? Yep. Huh. What does that mean? It means that someone wanted to secure the place even more. And they wanted to secure it before you got here, Iris. Presumably because they wanted to make sure Maya couldn't get out. This means that Iris can only open one of these locks, the first one. Yes, that's correct. What? Iris, try to think. Please, isn't there any way around this? Well, like I said, there are hundreds of different ways to set these locks. I suppose if I went through every combination with each one, I could remove them. But... It will take time, won't it? Yes. About a day, if I had to guess. A whole day? Well, that's better than leaving the locks in place. Will you do this for us? Sure. I'll do whatever I can. We've got to wait another day. Hang in there, Maya. You're going to have to call on your inner strength now. Just think of hamburgers, kid. It'll be fine. <laughs> you know what, Iris? There's still one thing I don't quite get. And what might that be, Phoenix Wright? I think it's obvious. Iris, on the night of the murder, where were you? Hmm? Please, Iris, don't give me that look. You told us that you were in your room at Hazakura Temple at the time of the incident. But you were seen that same evening at the Inner Temple. And then, you were spotted at the scene of the crime in Hazakura Temple too. It just made me want to go, Hazakura Temple too. Like, I go to? <laughs> <laughs> also, folks, you, uh, I don't know if I'll edit this in, uh, in one of the earlier episodes or now, 
but um, we already know who the killer is in this. Given the sword, don't we, Moon? A little, a little someone from a, another game that Moon played. Sweats loudly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I know anything, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> to fill things I feel in, like there's this game that uh... Uh, Moon played. And one of the weapons that they got there was the seven branch sword or the shiti shito. <laughs> yeah, shiti shito. Uh, because obviously it's a historical, legendary <laughs> blade. So of course, when you're having a game with swords, but that means Toen killed, <laughs> killed, uh, Maya's fucking mother, and I can't, I can't take it. I cannot, I cannot. <laughs> Toen, how could you do this? We thought you were a sweet boy. A good boy. You were supposed to save the world, and then you murdered somebody. <laughs> wow. Being spotted at both Hazakura Temple and the Inner Temple, it's as if you've, uh... Well, Iris, I think it's about time you told us the truth. Uh-oh, how many locks does she have? Oh, only three? That's fine, then. <laughs> I knew it. There's something going on here that we don't know about. Golly, Feeny, you think? <laughs> it's like it's a murder mystery or something. Well, we'll leave you two for now. February 9th, Inner Temple Gate. I'm finally getting to the bottom of this case. Oh, hey, Edgeworth. <laughs> that was my worst joke yet. 10 out of 10. <clears throat> oh, I get it. Took me a while. <laughs> I mean, well, it was really non sequitur sounding. But still. <laughs> I can count on Iris to break. <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered the Barra Edgeworth. Thing you said earlier, and now I'm I'm completely unfocused. <clears throat> I can count on Iris to break those locks, so I should try to gather more clues. Does that mean Bara Edgeworth would still be a bottom? I don't know. Wouldn't that be a sight? I don't want to. I don't want to speculate right now. That it would get too involved. There would be debates. <clears throat> we'll dedicate an entire From episode Sister to Bikini. it. <laughs> Coco, do you really want to tempt fate with me and Binks in the fucking chat? <laughs> yes. Oh no. Oh, God. I vote switches. That's just me. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's my From sister bikini. Too. Yes. <laughs> From sister bikini, Edgeworth, Gumshoe. <sighs> And pearls. Would you find that fucking kid, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> you make me so mad every case you're in. <laughs> Take care of that baby. <laughs> February 9th, Inner Temple Garden. The cops are still combing the place. They, they look clear. Look, 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 look. They look pretty nervous. <laughs> the invisible cops. Yes, the invisible cops. They're all just like, what would be better is if instead of invisible, they had all just been recolors of gumshoe. Like an awkward sprite kind of lumbering around back and forth. But they'd have hats <laughs> and gumshoe would, would have his head uncovered, obviously. <clears throat> I'd be nervous too. It's got to be a tough job covering up evidence. Oh, hey. Were you crying? <laughs> Especially with someone giving you the evil eye the whole time. That's my husband. <laughs> How could I have done that? <sighs> wow, I can't believe it's still bothering him. It's almost like it's like just some thinking about dinner. he's had. <laughs> yeah. Edgeworth? Ugh. Courtyard comfort time? Question mark. <laughs> uh, hey, don't you dare run away! 
<laughs> Can't run away your, from your gay feelings. <laughs> fucking <laughs> Edward. <laughs> what do I want? If you came here to laugh at me, then get on with it. I'm laughing at you. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Go on, laugh away. <laughs> I was ready to hug it out with him. But he's just the same prideful, stupid Edgeworth that I married. <laughs> Hug it out anyway. I know, right? You went back to the criminal affairs department, right? You said you wanted to look into something concerning Iris. Y yes. And thanks to what I found, I was reminded of something terrible. have no idea how you forgot about that. I mean, I... he he's repressing that, but you know. You guys are putting a lot of effort into the investigation of the garden here, huh? There's a high chance that this is the actual scene of the crime, that's why. You mean because of the writing in blood and the talisman in the snow? And again, Maya's fucking name is written in blood by a victim. <laughs> exactly. As you know, those things couldn't have been done here after the murder. But surely you don't suspect. Maya. Do you? You have to treat everyone as the suspect. Maya as well as Iris. It's our job, right? Insert me just banging my fucking face against this keyboard. God fucking damn it again. <laughs> She's missing, dude. <sighs> so, I guess you still haven't gotten over your fear of earthquakes. I mean, that takes a long time in therapy, so... And you're not even seeing a therapist, because mm -hmm. you're in denial. No. Thankfully, my nightmares have stopped. But still, if the ground gives even the slightest tremor, I find myself short of breath. But he still takes the stairs. Hmm, yeah. Makes me feel sad. <sighs> Seventeen years ago, when we were little school kids at the same elementary school. It's a little redundant, Feeney. Edgeworth found himself in the middle of a murder. It all started with that big quake that hit the courthouse. You know, a lot of things started with this murder. Oh, yes. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, I know things. Oh. Uh oh. Things? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> She's been teasing me a lot about Investigations I mean, 2, which I haven't I played. Do. What was that? Isn't that what Binks likes to do to you anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, Coco, I know something. <laughs> You're gonna love it. It's true. Yes. yes, I was stuck in the elevator with my father, who was a defense. We were deprived of oxygen and we passed out. That's when it happened. A single gunshot shattered my whole life. I lost everything that day, all because of that earthquake. My dreams, my family, and myself. Honey, we really need to get you to therapy. <laughs> Every single character in this series needs some therapy, but yeah, especially Edgeworth.
Edgeworth, most most of all, I feel like, is like right up there. Maya, second most. <laughs> yeah. And then it's a toss up for the rest. It's been more than 17 years now. And that case was finally resolved three years ago, right? Wow, it's been that long. Mm-hmm. Shit. You think I don't know that? I was there. But... Oh. It was such a shock. I never imagined I could be so wrong about myself and my life. Well, I just realized that means that in this game, Maya's already 20. Why is no baby no more? I'm gonna cry. <laughs> How do you suppose Phoenix and Edgeworth are, actually? When I think about it. I think Phoenix was 24 in the first game. So he yeah, should so be about like 27, 20. 28, somewhere around there. Okay. Okay, you know what? Now I understand why there's so many people who ship Phoenix and Maya, because there's not that that large of a gap when she's an adult so yeah it's, it's not that. it's not a huge gap it's just one of those See, things where it always felt was, familial was, well yeah that but also i thought she was a lot younger teenager in general in the series so i didn't recognize how old she was yeah no it's like yeah i don't think it's a bad thing if well people you know what it. this is the first time anime has actually like pitch something where I thought someone was younger rather than older than they were. So that's interesting. Usually I assume people are like 20 when they're 14 and I hate that. <laughs> so much. That was me with, the, what was that, Attack on Titan when that first released? It was like, oh yeah, these kids are all like probably 20, 21. Nope. 13 and 14. <laughs> all right, sure. You look like a fully developed adult, but what do I fucking know? <laughs> I'm sorry, right. There's nothing else I can say. Not after you chose to become a lawyer for my sake. And not after you saved me. Oh, shit. Okay. Edgeworth. Hold on. That's watching funny anime. Edgeworth. You're stronger than you think, so no more of this self-pity, okay? Why don't you say that out loud, you fucking nerd? <laughs> <laughs> there was something that bothered me about her from the moment we met. I felt like I'd seen her somewhere before. No, wait. Not somewhere. I felt like I'd seen her in court before. So you went back to the criminal affairs department to look for her file? Yes, I checked over every case file I've ever worked on. And I was right. I had seen her face before. Six years ago. Six years ago? It was my first appearance in court, and as cases go, it was my worst night. So, who is she? I'm sorry, right? I can't give that information away to a member of the general public. Honey, I'm gonna fucking punch you in the leg. What the hell? You're so stupid. <laughs> this is so dumb. <sighs> fucking stupid, determined face. Fucking Sasuke ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst insult you could have given him. My God. Yeah. God, Sasuke I'm ass sure. motherfucker. <laughs> I'm angry at him. This is what he deserves. <laughs> anyway. What? Why not? It might be a crucial piece of the puzzle that solves this case. The woman I knew was the daughter of a jewelry store owner. 
She had nothing to do with Iris and Hazakura Temple. That sounds like a fucking lie. And neither did the case. Mm. No, that woman is completely unrelated to this murder. I love how it's an orange text, too. Edward, you're sleeping on the couch. Unrelated? That's the translation. It was actually what he thought. <laughs> yes, I can say that with complete confidence. <laughs> so mad. So fucking mad at this game. You're wrong, Edgeworth. She's totally related to this case. I can see all your orange text. <laughs> we need to fill Edgeworth in. <laughs> Moon! <laughs> I caught up a second too late with that one. I can't help it. It's too tempting. <laughs> I need to explain the connection between Iris and the woman Edgeworth knew. Because she's got a connection to me. Hmm. Sad. <laughs> uh, da, da. Is it something that we present? I can't remember at this point. Uh, uh, I think you have to talk to Bikini first. Yeah, I don't see anything here that'll help us. Oh, cool! <laughs> what a game for uh, a fucking magazine. Yeah, no. February 9th, Dusky Bridge. It's weird that there's no one around all of a sudden. It sure gets quiet up here in the mountains when you're all on your own. Cue some dude with a fucking knife coming and shanking him, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Alone. I guess I should go check out the shack just down the path. This doesn't sound like a horror movie at all. Maybe- well, this is a horror movie if we find Larry. Maybe I'll find Larry there sulking again. February 9th, Heavenly Hall. Oh! Uh, Mr. Nick! I'm weeping. Pearls! What are you doing here? N n nothing <laughs> What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Hmm. Well, we don't know yet. Oh, I see. Hey! What do you think you're doing here, Nick? Larry! This is the loser shack where losers get together to lose themselves. This is the what? Hey, we find comfort in each other's failures, okay? You got a problem with that? Uh, look, Mr. Nick, uh, Mr. Larice did a picture of me. That's... Um, great, Pearls. I thought she was honestly getting fan art of her ship, uh, drawn by, <laughs> by Larry. <laughs> she ships Maya and Feeny so much, I honestly expected it. <laughs> We're going to gather firewood now. We'll be cooking some half-rotten potatoes over a miserable little campfire. So you stay out not, of our way! You are not feeding my daughter half-rotten potatoes, you fucking pleb. <laughs> <laughs> I will fight you, Larry Butts, in the street, and I will win, because you suck. <laughs> I'm talking as Phoenix right now. This is me, Moon. I will end your fucking life. <laughs> I would pay to see that. Me too. I'm gonna fucking suplex him. Anyway. I don't believe this. Why can't he try getting fired up over becoming a better man? No one believes a word I say anymore. 
Listen to me, Pearl! You don't want to trust that this kind of guy, okay? Who only let you down? Jimmy, it's true, but holy shit. No. <laughs> tough child. Mystic Maya. Oh, okay. Pearls, please! Go hang out with a real adult like Kamshu! <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will end this episode right here. Thank you guys for joining us, and see you next time. Bye! Bye.